Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Ingrid Carlson with Care Tutti. And I have Barkley in the room, so you might hear him on and off. <laughs> he says hi. Um, today we are working on the second part in our Junk Journal 101 series. And today is um, what exactly do you need to start a junk journal? So um, just a quick recap, and if you didn't catch the first video, I will have it linked down below. I'll also have a playlist so that you can watch them all in order and um, in case you mean, need anything or if you ever want to refer back to it at any time. So um, first of all, I um, just want to encourage you, I want to inspire you to um, have creativity and self-expression through art or junk journaling, which we are doing today. I like to do both. Um, and I just wanted to say that I believe that every life is a story that's worth telling and every memory is worth cherishing. And I think that's what junk journaling is to me. And I hope that you see that through this series, through my channel. I think it's a way to romanticize and preserve the precious moments of your life. And um, we talked about what are, what is a junk journal and what do they look like? And I showed you different ones that I had. But today I'm going to show you some supplies that you will need to make a junk journal. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you what you really, really need, right? I'm gonna show you things that are unnecessary, but I like. And then I'm gonna show you things that are necessary that I think you need to have in order to start a journal. And I encourage you that um, if you want to share a tip with someone that may be new to junk journaling and you can show them your love and enthusiasm for it, drop a comment down below and let them know something that you love to have in your junk journals. The thing about junk journals is the way that it um, started, the original concept was it to, was to use junk. So your receipts, your junk mail that comes in the mail, anything that you were going to discard, but maybe it's beautiful or maybe it holds a special memory. Let's say you were out and you got ice cream with your kids and you saved, you know, the little um, wrappers that go around the the um, cake cones, maybe you took that wrapper and then you stuck it in your journal and then you journaled about it. That's one way to preserve a memory that will last forever. What's crazy about this is that sometimes we can't recall day by day things that have happened to us, but we can look at a photo and remember so many details of what was happening that day or that month or that year or whatever it is. And that's kind of what this does. We, I also love to look at this as preserving the old and the ways of the olden ways and like just the, the beautiful and the lovely things. And then just um, kind of bringing some of that into our lives that can sometimes feel rushed and mundane and just robotic. And now we're going to cultivate beauty and, and just have it with us. And I think that the more you do it, the more that you bring that into your life and the more that, um, that you can, um, just appreciate the things around you. I think that's another great use for a junk journal is to do a gratitude journal, but let's go ahead and get started. And so for a junk journal, you're going to need the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a blank canvas. Where are you going to pour your heart and soul? Um, where are you going to store these memories? And you can have many journals. At the moment, I have a few going on. And I know that some of you can relate with that. And so the first thing that you're going to want to do is get a blank canvas and um, just choose something that speaks to you or that you feel a connection with. It could be any any size. It does not need to be five by seven. It does not need to be nine by six. It does not need to be anything special, but the way what speaks to you. And I'm going to tell you right now that when I first started journaling, I made the mistake of always trying to go with bigger journals. And then I wouldn't follow through because you have to fill up a lot more space in a larger journal. So I'm going to show you here. This is kind of a junk kind of art journal crossbreed but i'm going to show you the real estate on this page right here is a lot smaller than the real estate on this page 
And so I know that I'm going to be able to finish a, a page like this a lot quicker than I can a page like this, even with all this texture and stuff, just for the mere fact that it's a smaller space. So keep that in the forefront of your mind when you are picking a journal is that if do you have a lot of time, do you want to spend hours on a page, then go with something larger. If you don't have a lot of time, but this is something that you want to like dip your toes in and, and see if it's for you, then I would recommend that you start with something smaller. And also small is so cute. I love my small journals. I might love my small journals more than I love my bigger journals. I kind of love them all. And every time I make one, I say, this is the one I love. And um, I, <laughs> I welcome you to, to walk that walk with me because that's going to be you soon. You're going to see. So um, the first thing is a base. So you can really pick anything. You can pick an old book, um, which I got this from probably a thrift store. I can't recall at the moment. You can go to places like Salvation Army or Goodwill. You can go to local thrift stores or you can even some libraries that are discarding old books. You can talk to them and you might be able to either buy them for very cheap. Sometimes they'll have like sales once a month and where they sell their old books. But don't let that stop you. If you cannot find a, an old book, go to Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has books for $1.25. They're not going to have this color, but I'm going to show you how you can create that color on your own. You do not need to spend a lot of money in order to start junk journaling. And I've shown, I have um, several hauls of junk journal supplies that you can get at Dollar Tree. And so one of the things I would say would be a book. Another way that you can go about junk journaling or um, to make a journal is you can just get kind of a, a notebook. It could be a composition notebook. In this case, this one is a dot grid book and you can just start drunk journaling with something like this. Another really great idea is if you have, let's say a spiral notebook from school or something and it has pages torn out, but it has pages that have writing in it, but you were going to throw that out that's a great start for a junk journal. When you cover it with papers and stuff, no one's ever gonna know what was behind there. And then you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Actually, that's a terrible saying now that I said it out loud like that. But you're gonna get um, two things. One, you're avoiding something going to a landfill. And then you're making a beautiful piece of art that's gonna live forever. And that's a point that I wanted to say with old books. I know that there's people that are of the school of thought of like, don't rip open old books and you know you need it but there's a lot of books that are going to our landfills and if we are rescuing them from that and making them creating art with them that's going to be passed down through our generations through our kids our kids kids hopefully that that is very special and um, that's how i recommend that you look at it that's the way that i look at it another thing i wanted to say is this is going to be a blanket video, and I'm just gonna show you the supplies. We're, I'm going to do other videos where I go through each of the ones that I said, and I'm gonna show you different examples of them, as well as um, we can do little demonstrations and see how they work together. So I know when I first started this, there wasn't really a lot of like actually in depth, and I'm a person that needs to learn like step by step. I need to know, tell me what to get and I'll get it. Tell me what to do and I'll do it when I start off. Once I get going, then I can branch out and do my own thing, but in the beginning, I like to be told exactly, like exactly what, and so that's where this series comes in. Oh, the other idea for a book is you could just make your own. So this one is used, um, I think this is using like poster board and then some vintage like tissue pattern tissue. And then I have some eyelets here and this is in a um, traveler's notebook style. So you could make your own. That is your other option. The next thing that you're going to need to have is an adhesive. Now, whether you use a white school glue, you use something that is more toxic and more powerful is going to rely on you. When you're first starting, I you don't need to go out and buy a glue like this. For me, 
I use something like this because I know that it's going to last. And the last thing that I want is a book to fall apart, even though I'm sure that with extreme temperatures that could still happen even with the greatest adhesive. But I'm gonna try my best not to have that happen. But there's a lot of different um, glues that you can use. You can do wet glues or you can do um, dry glues. You can do glue sticks. You can also do um, these this double-sided tape which is really more for i use this for spines or for something that's very heavy that i need to give it um, some extra support because this is really strong so you don't need this right off the bat but this is something that i have in my arsenal another thing i wanted to talk about as far as adhesives is washi tape although washi tape isn't necessarily a glue it can hold papers together in something that you can that you may have heard of called a tip-in where you take a piece of paper and you tip it in using this tape and it kind of flips washi tape if you've never dealt with it before it is almost like a paper tape or maybe it is a paper tape and it has a almost waterproof um feel to it and the negative to washi tape is the adhesion on it is not great you can always peel it up so i always suggest that you use a liquid glue on underneath to kind of give it a little bit more support another thing that for me um, is a must have is a stapler now i have this stapler that is from tim holtz and it does tiny little staples and it's adorable and if you've never seen it before i'm going to show you that's just some scraps that i have laying around and see i have this little guy so like let's say i want to layer these pieces He's not all cut out, but we're going to pretend he is. Look how cute that little staple is. And it's adorable. Not only is it holding your pieces together, but it's a decorative ornament that goes on your page that I think is really cute. You do not need to buy this. You can also get a regular stapler, which I have as well. And then what I like to do is I like to get these fun and this is the the regular stapler um i like to get these fun colors of staples and um i bought it originally for the golds but i've been having a lot of fun using this a fuchsia color and i'll show it to you here and that's just a lot of fun another thing that i think that um you need for your junk journals is going to be scissors. Now, what type of scissors you use is completely up to you. I, th these are the ones that I use on an everyday basis. They're, you can kind of see for um, size wise, they're not too big. Um, scissors can range in, in size and in industrial strength and everything else. You can also get some small ones for doing, um, fussy cutting, which means you're just cutting around in intricate pieces, kind of like that boy that I just showed you. So when you're getting in the creases of all this, if you have a little scissor to, to do that with. I do it with these scissors, um, but I know a lot of people that like to use the little ones. And like I said, I'm gonna do a video about scissors, about the glue. Um, but this is just kind of giving you an overview of the things that you are going to need, both frivolous and necessary. At the end, like I said, I'll tell you the, the nitty gritty, what you have to have. Speaking of scissors or cutting or anything like that, one thing that I love to have on hand is a ruler. And I like having a ruler on hand because I use it kind of like you would use scissors. So to cut a straight edge, you can either do it this way and pull it up and cut that, or you can cut it this way. <laughs> okay, that was a blooper. That paper is really delicate. So you can cut it like this and cut your pieces. What's really great about using a ruler for cutting is that it's giving you, see this like kind of deckled edge? So it's not straight and it gives it more of a lend to a vintage feel, which is really great. 
Another thing is for me, the ruler doesn't get lost as often as the scissors do on my desk when I'm creating and I have like a mess going on. And so that's something that I like to have. If you are making your own journals, um, you're going to need something called an owl tool. And I'll try to list all of the materials that I'm talking about today in my Amazon storefront, which I'll have linked down below. So you can take a look at it, even if it's just to get ideas. And what the way that I would suggest going about this video is, at the end, I'm gonna tell you what you really need to have. Like, it's just gonna be the nitty gritty, the, the like bare minimum to get started. All the other stuff is extras. And so any of the other things that I might have in my Amazon storefront or that I've mentioned here, you can always write them on a wish list that you could put in a pocket in your junk journal. And then as you can, or if you want to, if you're growing with this craft, then you can always pick them up along the way. This little tool you can see has a very sharp edge and it is used to make holes inside of or on paper. I have this little piece of ruler that I've cut up and so I'm just gonna demonstrate here. And when I push down, oops, I pulled up, but you can see it made a little hole. So when I am working with a handmade journal, I use this to cut my holes to do my, my stitching to hold the journal together. Now, if you do not have access to an owl, a great alternative, is a needle. I believe this is called a darning needle. It's a thicker needle and I'm going to show you the size of a regular needle for comparison. And you can see how much thicker this is. And so you can always use something like this and it has a semi blunt end to it. It's definitely not as pointy as something like this. And you can use that for, for making your holes. I also like to keep my needles, just a little tip, on a scrap of fabric, and it's a lot less um, likely that they'll get lost on my desk because they do get lost. I also like to keep a little box here of some thread that I use. This isn't a little extra. This is what I would call an embellishment. Any thread or anything like that, which we haven't gotten to, but since I showed you this, I figured I'd just a little, put a little blurb in there. I use the embroidery thread and like you know you can find it for I don't know it's like 25 cents maybe it's more I don't know <laughs> you can get it in a lot of different colors and so this adds a lot of texture to your pages if you're up for some hand stitching a pen and a pencil if I can find one to just mark up. Um, you can use any kind of pencil. I like this pencil. It's um, one of like the the kids learning pencils when they're learning how to, to write when they're young. Um, but I love the way that it makes marks for art. And so I just keep have it always on my desk. This is one of my favorite pens. It's the Sharpie S gel. What's really nice about this pen is that it doesn't smudge. So, and it's a gel pen so I can write and then I can, and I'm pushing on it, and there's no smut. that you could get is a paper cutter, a paper trimmer. And so what this is, it's a, you put your paper here, and I know that most of you know how to use this, but I do want to do this series for beginners as well if they don't know. So you put your paper down, and you actually wanna start with the with this in the middle of the paper, especially if you're using a thinner paper so it doesn't buckle it, and you just cut it, and it cuts like a straight line. For me, I don't seem to work well with this, and I never cut it in a straight line, and so I don't reach for it that much. I'd rather use my ruler or um, scissors, what I tend to use this for, this one is from We Are Memory Keepers, and it had in here this little bone folder because you can use these little notches for scoring. And this is a really thin piece of paper, but I'll kind of show you. So scoring, you're just, it's almost like a folded line. I don't know if you can see that. And then it just allows that fold to happen a lot easier and like smoother what you would do with your bone folder as well is then you'd burnish down the sides like that so that it makes a really crisp 
fold. So um, this is kind of an honorable mention. And like I said, I like this because it's the two in one instead of having two, a cutter and a scoreboard. But I would recommend a bone folder. I think that it comes in handy. Now, if you don't have a bone folder, that you don't have to have it. You can actually use the end of your scissors to get a really sharp line as well. So don't be deterred by that. I wish we had smell vision here. And if I did this, you would know what this is. <laughs> Can anyone guess? So this is coffee dye, or <laughs> it's not coffee dye, it's instant coffee. And I just have it in an old jar and I have one of my daughter's like little play spoons in here and it's instant coffee. And what I do is when I'm working on a project, I can actually coffee dye pieces here. You can also do a big batch in coffee dye, which we'll be doing, we'll be covering that in the series later on. But remember how I was telling you that you could get a book from Dollar Tree and it's not going to have, you know, the patining that this has or the, you know, the color. We can add that by coffee dyeing. And so you don't have to worry about it not having it. We can fake it. Speaking of faking that look, another option for you, if you don't want to have to deal with like the wet and, you know, dealing with the coffee dye is something like this. This is a called a Distress Oxide ink and you can stamp with this but what i like to use this for is for distressing so i'm going to show you that i have this just piece of file folder and if i wanted it to look more vintage i'm going to take this this is a foundation makeup brush and I'm just going to rub it along the edges. And what's really great about this brush is that it gives you a really like smooth transition into the color. And look how quickly we just dress that. And so now it looks weathered. You can also bend it and weather it in different spots. And I also like to take this and rub it on the edge that was a little much but rub it on the edge and you can see there where it gives me that like darker line so it looks like it's vintage paper even when it's not but again this is more of a luxury item whereas you could just do coffee dye which is going to cost you very little and i think i got the coffee from Dollar Tree. If not, you can find it at like Walmart or Target or any of those stores. So it can be lace, it can be um, ribbons, it can be different trims. Any of this stuff, it's what we call embellishments. And an embellishment is just going to um, add more personality and charm to your journal. It's going to make your pages pop and just look a little bit more custom. And it's kind of the icing, right? It's the cherry on top. It just gives it that little extra finished piece. But don't worry, you like this is some lace that I got from an, an estate sale, but you, if you can't get your hands on it, you can always take a lace like this, which is white, and you can either coffee dye it or you can add some distressing on it. I'll just do this really quick and show you the difference. So you see how that already looks weathered. And so you don't have to spend a lot of money. And to be honest, some of my favorite trim that looks similar to this, but I don't have any on hand right now, is from Dollar Tree. This one's a, I think they have it in cream as well as white, and it's really nice. And this one can still get distressed as well. These two instruments. This is, they're both from We Are Memory Keepers. This is called a crocodile. And actually, I think they're both called crocodiles. This is for setting eyelets, which I showed you 
right here. This is an eyelet right here, or these right here. And it cuts, you can punch a hole in this small size, which it looks like it's one eight, one eighth. And then this is three sixteenths. And then once you cut the, the hole, then you can set it. There's like this little tool moves around and you can set it. You can also, an alternative for this would just be a hole punch that you get at Dollar Tree where you can just punch holes. It's just gonna be the one size. I think if it's not the 3 16 it's close to that size and it's the standard hole punch that you see like for notebook paper. This is a, it's called a corner chomper and all it does is round your edges. So I'm gonna show you. You just stick this in here and so you can have rounded edges which just gives it a nice touch the one side is a half an inch and then there's a quarter inch and i think they make um, different variations of both of these tools but these are the ones that i have on hand something else i love to have on hand are these clips so these i believe are binder clips and what they do, what I like to use them for, is they hold your pages down. So when you're working on a journal, sometimes like the page wants to flip over and this kind of holds the one side in place. It also just looks cute, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna show you, there's different sizes of them and different types that you can get, but they have this one. They have all different, even to like little itty titty, tiny, itty bitty ones <laughs> and then they also have these that you can find at Dollar Tree which I like to use as well or these which I think these are called binder clips and you can find these at any office supply or in the office supply section and I believe Dollar Tree sells them I think I'm not 100% sure they will work on the same thing and depending on the size you have is how much paper you can you know sandwich in between them but these are um, something that I use a lot that I reach for um, on a probably daily basis this little tool I get asked about a lot, it's from Making Memories and it's a distress tool. And so what I use it for is distressing the sides of my paper so that it looks weathered and torn. But you don't, first of all, I don't think they make this anymore. They make a, another one, I believe it's by Tonic or Ranger, Tim Holtz, I believe. And I'll have that listed in my Amazon storefront, but it's not the same as this one. But what I'm going to show you is if you're very careful, you can just use your scissors to create the same effect or close to. And then you can even go a little bit more in depth and use it kind of like a saw, which I like to do. So you definitely do not need to have this. Um, but that is something that I have in my um, supplies. These little guys are one of my best friends, not these buttons, but these little bulb pins. And so it looks like a safety pin, but the difference is that it goes all the way. Let me show you. Actually, I can use one of these buttons. A safety pin, you can only, it only goes to right here because it has that little like notch at the end this rolls all the way around so they're a lot of fun you can find these sometimes in um, clothing like on your tags when you buy clothing um, but i have a link for a really good deal on them on amazon um, i believe tim holt sells them as well but they're a lot more expensive um, my friend gifted me some of these that are like gold silver and black the ones that i have listed down below are just this um, kind of, um, what do you call that? Like a pewter? No, it's um, like an, a bronze color. And it's, and it's really nice, it looks really vintage, and it goes with everything. Buttons are a great embellishment as well to add. And you can buy um, like the flat, regular buttons in all different colors. You can also do more ornate buttons. I believe, even though this looks like metal, I believe this is a plastic button that I had gotten in a kit. And I have like a little drawer 
these I got so long ago I could not tell you I think they were from Tuesday morning but I'm I cannot remember now but it has like all this variety of buttons and um, this is another thing that just kind of um, embellishes your page and just um, takes your projects to the next level now by saying that now let's get into what do you really need to have so I'm going to start, let me clear this off, and we are going to pull the necessities. If it was Ingrid right now, and I was starting a brand new journal, what would, what would I do? What would I want? What are the things that I would get? Another thing that I kind of forgot to mention is for an adhesive, some of us already had these laying around and I know they get kind of a bad rap, but a glue gun um, is still pretty good on paper and it's kind of hard to take stuff apart after it's been glued with a glue gun. So with a hot glue gun. So um, this is definitely something if you have it sitting around, try it out. I'm always an advocate of um, use what you have. Oh, I forgot the most important part, and that's because I had it off to the side because it's my favorite, and you guys know it's my favorite because um, it's paper. And so what I mean by that is like you could get something like this, which is a paper pad. You can buy these at like Joann's or Michael's. This one here is in like pinks and black and gold and tan, I believe. This is double-sided paper. It's 12 by 12. And I believe usually they run around $20. And this one has, or had, doesn't anymore, but had um, 36 sheets in it. You can do something like this. Um, they come, you can kind of see here the, oh, and it wasn't gold, it was silver. You can see here what you get. These are each of the papers. And usually you get, it's, um, it'll be like, is it 18 and then double you get doubles of everything so i don't know if one two three four five six eleven twelve so i'm not sure how how this one is so um anyways um you can do that or you can use printables and i'm going to pull out some of my printables if you are getting started and you don't have the funds to purchase a paper pad or purchase printables, then I have you covered because I have a lot of printables that are listed in my Facebook group, which is of course linked down below. But I have a lot of free printables that you can print off and use absolutely for free. Um, and you can start journaling like right now, today. All you need to do is be able to print them. But this is from my newest kit. I also sell these on Etsy. So if you're interested, that'll be linked down below and you can take a look at these. I have a few kits listed on there. This is Cordelia. And every time I make a kit, I say this is my favorite kit. I've already started creating with this kit. So this is like kind of the remnants that I have over here. Um, and, but this is like a printout of a full uh, background sheet of paper. And so um, that is probably my favorite part. I feel like the printables just, um, they just pull everything together. And for me, I love making kits, not just like um, pieces, like not just ephemera pieces, but you'll find in my shop and stuff that I do full kit. So it has the ephemera and the papers kind of like a take on this, even though this one doesn't have ephemera because then you don't have to think about it. You can just, you already know that these all match. They all color coordinate. And so you can just get to the best part, which is creating. It's, um, you don't have to worry about everything being perfect or anything because it all goes together it already is kind of done for you and then your job is to romanticize your precious moments and um just to creatively put it all together and so um you could create a romantic beautiful visionary masterpiece that i think your kids are gonna love for years to come so now, now, this time, I'm not joking, this time let's get to what supplies I think that you need. So the first thing is go and grab some of my free printables. And again, they're in my Facebook group. Um, 
then the next thing I would do for the base of a journal, if I was starting over, I would get a book. If And again, if you cannot get a vintage book, then go and get a book from Dollar Tree. Then you can decide whether you want to coffee dye it um, to make it more vintage, which I think this is kind of a, a staple. It adds a lot for, for what you're doing. Like this piece of paper right here, it's newsprint. You know, that kind of like gray, the scribble paper that you can buy pads of. And this has been coffee dyed and it looks so nice and it gives it like just such a, listen to this. If you're a paper lover, you're gonna love that. So I would say that the coffee dyeing is is something that I would do as well. If you wanted to step that up a notch, then you could get the Distress Oxide and a um, blender of some sort, whether it's a makeup brush or they um, Tim Holtz sells other blenders that you can use. Let's see, um, I think that it is imperative for you to have a pair of scissors and a ruler of some sort. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be in centimeters and millimeters. It can be whatever um, you want it to be. I actually have two on my desk. I have this clear one. What I don't love about this one is it doesn't start measuring on the edge. It measures like inside here. And so that's why I have this tape here because that's where the measurement actually begins. So, um, that's why I like using this one a little bit better. And also um, I like the metal to this as well, the, the weight of it. Um, I would get, um, of all of, like the embellishments and stuff, I would get some ribbon. And where is my ribbon? Let's see. I would get a roll of this. This one I got, I believe, at Hobby Lobby. And sometimes you can find their sales. So this was $3 for nine feet. And um, you can usually get it on sale for 40% off. So whatever that, that is. But I would start off with something like this in a neutral, either a white, an off-white, or a tan. I know they have this one like kind of in a brown color. But I would pick... Um, like more of a white color instead of spending money on an owl because if you don't know if you're going to do it i would definitely go with the needle and then i would also get some of the embroidery floss because you can use this for binding you can use this for slow stitching there's a lot of different uses for it um Another big bang for your buck is, they're called chindi rugs, and I do not have one in front of me, but you can tear it apart and get some of the pieces to use as ribbon, and you can buy them at five and below for whatever, like five, six bucks, and then you have a ton of ribbon that you can use. Another vital part that I would say would be a pen and a pencil. Um, you do, if you want to do printables, you're going to need a printer of some sort, or you can also go to somewhere and um, like King Staples, Office Depot, any of those I think will print for you. And um, I think I gave this a long thought because some of you know that I struggle with glue and I'm always trying to find the proverbial perfect glue, perfect adhesive. And I would say, if I had to do it over again, I would go with a glue like this. This is a dry glue. It is a tape runner. And so what that means is you take it and there's a little space here for your finger. You roll it and it adds the glue. Can you see it right there? It adds the glue on your paper. The only negative about this is it does not give you much wiggle room. And so you might want to get like a white glue. And like I said, 
I use this one from Dollar Tree and I have found that it's good. You can also get like a PVA or an Elmer's school glue that works very similarly. Um, because once this is stuck down, it's kind of hard to unstick it. This of course is unsticking for me right now, but usually <laughs> it's like, like really hard to, to take it off and it'll come off with pieces of the um, paper. And so let me think if there's anything else. So I think the thread, the ribbon, the papers, also any other papers that you have, um, junk journal mailers, envelopes, um, you know, the paper pad that I showed you before with the dot grid would be a good, um, good pieces to have in here. Um, I think for me, I would choose a stapler as well. You don't have to go and get the tiny attacher, but I would recommend a stapler because there's a lot of times where um, even if you're using the stapler kind of frivolously and just holding the place and then taking the staples out, um, you can use it like that. But I tend to use the my tiny attacher for a lot of things. Now, I think this is it. I think you can get a lot done with just this. And I'm trying to think right now if there's something I'm missing. You know, another thing that I might add to this is some paint, either a white or a black acrylic paint. And you can buy a cheap paint like, like the um, folk art paint. You can do something like this. This is gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck. You'll, and you don't even need a brush. You can use your fingers to um, add paint to your pages. And so I think that would be it. I think you can create a lot of really great things with just these products. And so you see here, you probably already have a lot of it. You probably have a stapler. You probably have scissors. You probably have a pen and pencil and a ruler. Um, you might have glue, you might have coffee, and so, and you, you might have a book laying around. So then, and then, like I told you, I have free printables for you right now. So you have those as long as you have a printer. And so there's just a few things that you would need to get. And it doesn't take a lot for you to make something beautiful. And I just wanted to encourage you that Sometimes we look at things and, oh, well, I want those bull pins and I want that lace and I want those special things. And yes, those special things are, they're sweet and they're lovely. And I, you know, I feel blessed anytime that I can use any kind of vintage fabric or anything like that. But I want to encourage you, don't let that stipend your creativity. Don't let that deter you from starting today. You can start with very little. You do not need this. You can even start with a book a magazine and some glue and we you can do it like glue book style like honestly just start um and i think the other thing is if you have a pen you can draw your own doodles you can um, add your own little touches and um, just make it yours and make it a masterpiece of, for you that tells the story of your life, of what you were going through today. And when your kids open this book up and they see the memories that you had, of memories of them, memories of yourself before them, and um, it's just such a beautiful keepsake. And I really encourage you that if you have not, if you've been on the fence and didn't know if you wanted to get into junk journaling, that this is the video that tells you like, hey, yeah, give it a shot. Anyways, I thank you so much for joining me. I hope that this was informative and helpful and that you will join me on this journey. I usually come on YouTube live on, right now the schedule is Mondays at 2 p.m. Central Standard, as well as Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Standard. And um, then you can also find me on Instagram where I'm um, pretty active. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon. Barkley says, bye. Everything I have, I owe to Jesus and everything I create comes through him and I am just a vessel for him.